we were uh, off of northern Honshu in our 7th War Patrol off the coast right north of uh, Yokohama, a little town called Todosaki, I believe was our point. And we had the area north of the runner. The runner was south of us. We had, well, each had a prescribed area that we stayed our, uh, restricting our activities to, so we didn't shoot at each other. And we, we made an attack early one morning. We were very f far north, almost to the Arctic Circle, so we had very short nights, about four-hour nights. And, and our charge was not full because we couldn't have the full six or eight hours we needed to charge the batteries off the diesel engine when we were on the surface at night. And so we, we didn't have a full charge, and we dove early in the morning, and we made a contact with a convoy of 21 ships, and they were close to the coast, hugging the coast, and we came in from the, the seaward side and made our approach and fired four torpedoes from our forward tubes uh, and then, then went under the target. Our, our first time I ever heard of a, a skipper using that tactic to go under the target, assuming that the destroyer's escorts would be on the, looking for us on the other side where the torpedoes came from, and we would be on the opposite side. Well, the way it worked out, the Japs outsmarted us. They were waiting for us on the other side. Before we could even come up and, and start firing with our stern tubes, they laid about six depth charges on us and drove us down to 365 feet. All the lights went out in a total darkness before, in several minutes before the emergency lights came back on, and we finally could see that we were six, 365 feet. Significance of that is our maximum test depth was 275 feet. And the pressure hull was, was imploding, you know, come, come, bending in like an oil can, boinging in, and, and we couldn't maneuver around because the stanchions were binding up, and uh, uh, of course all the, the glass broke, and, and uh, that day we went through a depth charging of 360 plus depth charges plus uh, I, I, we, we couldn't even count the bombs. We, we were jokingly sending with that a, a damn bomb factory over there in an air base somewhere because they were just literally lo unloading them, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And uh, this went on all day long, and we were flooded. At, we were running at a 30 degree up angle, approximately, uh, which is pretty steep. And the after engine, after torpedo room was about half full of water, and it was extremely cold. The injectors were reading 32 degrees when we dove. Uh, and the after engine room had, had water up over part of the auxiliary engine, which is in the bottom of it. Pump room was flooded. The forward torpedo room was flooded almost to the watertight doors. Uh, and we suffered like that uh, until late that night. At dusk, it was about 11 something, I think, when the sun went down. And uh, we were out of high pressure air. Our batteries were almost fully discharged. The, the oxygen was so bad, you couldn't light a cigarette. You literally had to hold the match, the sulfur, to the cigarette and <laughs> suck on it all the time to keep the damn thing lit. And so finally, uh, uh, then a lot of other things that, that we, we, we figured we'd bought the fire. I mean, we'd had it. That was it. There was no, no way we could get out of this thing. Our high pressure air was, was low. Uh, our low pressure blowers were gone because the pump room was flooded. We couldn't flood. We couldn't, we couldn't move water from one tank to another because every time we would blast some air into it to move it or pump it, the Jap, we, we had, oh, we, I forgot the important part, we had seven Jap destroyers making a circle around us like Indians around a wagon train, and they would take turns running over us, dropping depth charges all day long. Uh, and close ones, the depth charge has two sounds to it. One, if it's far away, it just has a big boom, which is probably the, the, the loudest sound you can possibly, well, you couldn't imagine because it actually goes through the spectrum of sound into pressure. So it makes a complete sound curve, see? And, and you can feel it go through your head, literally, just moing. Uh, and after about, what, 12, 13 hours of that, we, we finally got, uh, the skipper said, we're going to try to surface, and we got the boat back up. We had enough high pressure air to get back up to about 100 feet. And uh, he started one of the engines while we were still totally submerged, which sucked a tremendous vacuum in the thing. There were guys who said it couldn't be done. It was done because we had no other way to get back to the surface, and it drove us up to the surface. And But just before we did that, he called us together and said, we're going to have a battle surface, and we're going to go up there and die like Americans fighting. We're not going to sit down here and die like a bunch of damn rats. And, and we hit the deck, and we were just waiting for the first shells to start hitting us because we knew it was just a matter of minutes before they, they started pumping. The, you know, seven Jap ten cans around you, you knew you were dead. And uh, we were breaking out our guns to do what we could. Our three, all we had was a three inch and some 20 millimeters. And I was only after 20 millimeter. And we were breaking out the guns to try to do what we could. Have said. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, Johnny Haynes, who was our exec, uh, torpedo and gunnery officer, and he said, uh, belay it. Uh, stop everything. Hold it. Uh, stop. And we looked around, and there wasn't a damn Jap anywhere. Like a miracle. 